For more information on our top stories, do visit our website, channelstv.com, youtube.com forward slash channels web has videos of our shows. At least two people have been killed after robbers today invaded a commercial bank in Oyekiti, about an hour's drive from the Oyekiti state capital, Adoyekiti. The robbers who launched their operation at the close of business for the bank reported they blew up the entrance door with a dynamite. The public relations officer, the police public relations officer, Caleb Ikechuku, who confirmed the incident, could not confirm the number of casualties, but photographs taken by an eyewitness showed two bodies, a child and a man, lying on the floor of the bank in a pool of blood. Also, a burning van said to belong to the police was seen on the road after apparently being set ablaze by the criminals. Meanwhile, the police command in Oyo State has promised to fish out the killers of the Commissioner of Lands and Surveys driver during a robbery attack in Ibadan, the state capital. According to the Commissioner of Police, last night's incident, which took place around the Ulunde Academy area of Ibadan, was possibly random, with the driver and orderly running into the hoodlums along their route. He said preliminary investigations revealed that the Commissioner, Mr. Abdul Rahmin, Abiodun was not at the scene of the attack and he was already at home sleeping. The robbers, who were reportedly operating on motorcycles, shot the driver, who later died in hospital, and the orderly is still receiving treatment. Last night, there was an incident where the vehicle of the Commissioner for Lands in Oyo State was attacked by hoodlums when they blindly ran into a group of Okada riders who are criminals operating on with their Okada and the, the oddly as well as the driver ran into the criminals blindly and they were shot at close range. The driver subsequently died in the hospital while the oddly is still receiving treatment in the hospital. We have to be clear and truthful about this. As at the time of this incident, the Commissioner for Lands was safely in his house and the driver were returning the vehicle back to the office when they ran into these hoodlums. But let me assure you and the members of the public that the police in Oyo State is on top of the situation. We have been working assiduously since yesterday night to ensure that these criminals do not just come here in spite of everything that we have here, and go away scot-free. Away from security to the lawmakers now, the House of Representatives has directed its Committee on Petroleum Downstream to investigate over $396 million allegedly spent in four years on turnaround maintenance of the nation's three refineries. This follows a motion by a member, Ifani Moma, that the money was allegedly spent on the Port Harcourt, Wari and Kaduna refineries. He also alleges that the NNPC further spent 276 billion naira on operating expenses of the refineries between 2015 and 2018, as well as $36 billion on importation of petroleum products between 2013 and 2017. The NNPC spent a whooping $396.33 million between 2013 and 2017 to carry out repair works under the turnaround maintenance term scheme on its three decrepit refineries at Port Harcourt, Wari and Kaduna. The House also observes the claim that the NMPC also spent 276.872 billion naira on operating expenses of the refineries between 2015 and 2018, as well as $36 billion on importation of petroleum products between 2013 and 2017. The House is informed that the three refineries contribute less than 10% annually to Nigerians GDP and they are also among the league of refineries with the highest operating cost worldwide as their consolidated capacity utilization dropped to 6.1% at the end of September 2017. The House resolves to call on the federal government to consider divesting a certain percentage of its shareholding in Port Harcourt, Wari and Kaduna refineries to competent investors under transparent and fair bidding processes. 
Well, let's switch gears now. Here's my colleague, Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Hello, Ijoma. Let's start from the presidential villa where the 7th National Economic Council meeting opened today. Now, at that meeting, resolutions to combat challenges in mines and steel development, power distribution across the country, and investments into the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority top agenda. Addressing State House correspondents after the meeting, chaired by Vice President Professor Emil Shibajo, the Governor of Nasarawa State says the Council has resolved to fully engage mineral producing communities to avoid the mistakes made in the oil sector. Our correspondent Kayla Megwa reports. It is the 99th National Economic Council meeting and the 7th since 2019, chaired by Vice President Professor Yemi Usimbajo. After five hours of deliberations, the governors of Nasrawa and Imo State, in the company of the managing director of the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority, speak on resolutions reached by the council. The governor of Ekiti State, chairman of the governor's forum NGF, shall constitute an ad hoc committee involving governors to engage with the Federal Ministry of Mines and still to find ways of addressing all the issues involved so that there will be less challenges, especially in this particular ministry. Governor Emeka Enhedioha of Imo State gives the balance by the Ministry of Finance in the excess crude account and the stabilization account, as well as the decision of the council to review the status of the ownership structure of power distribution companies in Nigeria. The National Economic Council also resolved to constitute an adult committee, including Governor Nasir El Rufai of Kaduna State, as well as governors representing the six geopolitical zones who are currently serving in the board of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, to review the status of the ownership structure of the power distribution companies. The managing director of the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority says despite making a profit of 44.3 billion naira in 2018, as of July of 2019, they've made 24 billion naira and are looking forward to co-investment funds and a $250 million investment from the federal government to undertake more projects. Following the presentation, the council resolved the following. One to invest an additional $250 million into the NSIA. Two, that the governor of Kaduna State should chair a committee of the National Economic Council to consider how a portion of the pension funds can also be leveraged into investments for the NSIA with possible implementation through PENCOM. The National Economic Council is constitutional and made up of 36 state governors, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Minister of Finance, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, and other government officials with a view to create policies and programs targeted at Nigeria's economic growth. Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. Thanks a lot, Kayla. Now, the Senate President Ahmed Lowen is offering assurances that the upper legislative chamber will play its part in the confirmation of the acting EFCC Chairman Ibrahim Magu when President Buhari sent the request. Senator Lowen gave his word at a meeting with the chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Professor Issei Sage at the National Assembly. Professor Sage, in his address, asked for the Senate's cooperation in ensuring the confirmation of the acting EFCC chairman, as well as the consideration of several anti-corruption bills introduced under the 8th National Assembly. There is no request before the Senate for the confirmation of the chairman, acting chairman of EFCC. This is a new Senate, and therefore, until there is a request to this Senate, there is nothing the Senate uh, can do. And I want to assure you that any request that comes from Mr. President is a request that will make Nigeria uh, a better place, either in terms of appointments or legislation. And the Senate will act expeditiously to ensure that we, we play our part in the confirmation 
or passing of the legislation uh, appropriately and accordingly. As for oversight, uh, you mentioned that people complain that committees or members of the National Assembly demand monies or resources from MDS. Well, as far as I know, I am not a receipt of any complaint. And I've been in this uh, National Assembly now going into the 21st year. But Mr. Chairman, if any committee asks for anything from any MDA that is not <coughs> appropriate, the law is there to take its full course. And meanwhile, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission of the Federal High Court Abuja kicked against the admission of its own witness's statement in the trial of a British citizen, James Nolan, who is allegedly a link with the Process and Industrial Development P and ID contract scam. The witness, Agumbia De Adeshe, a commercial bank staff, had made a statement in writing to EFCC in which he chronicled how about eight accounts linked to the controversial oil and gas supply contract were opened in 2006. Ms. Adeshe, who was led in evidence by the EFCC counsel, Ehena Choekele, had told the court how huge amounts in dollars were transferred in batches from P and ID accounts overseas into its subsidiaries' accounts in Nigeria. A disagreement, however, erupted during cross-examination by counsel to the defendants, Mr. Paul Erokuru, when the witness admitted that there was nothing unusual in foreign companies transferring money to their subsidiaries in Nigeria legally. Mr. Erokuru, who cross-examined the witness based on his written witness statement to AFCC, applied to tender it as exhibit to assist the court in arriving at a just conclusion. However, the request was opposed by EFCC's counsel, who stated that the defense counsel did not lay foundation for admission of the statement. Justice Abang fixed December 6 for ruling on the admissibility or otherwise of the statement and continuation of the trial. Now over to the courtroom. The federal high court setting in Abuja has adjourned the trial of the former chairman of the defunct pension reform task team, Abdrashid Maina, to November the 25th after he reportedly bled in court today. At the resumption of trial, Miner's counsel, Francis Orosanye, informed the court that his client could not stand trial while the issue of his health status is still a question before the court. The lawyer noted that the Nigerian Correctional Service has asked for one week to turn in a report on Miner's health status. It will only be appropriate to wait till then. Mr. Orosanye then requested for an adjournment to sometime next week to enable Mr. Maina seek proper medical attention. Trial Judge Justice Okon Abang, while warning the prosecution against further delaying proceedings, granted the request, although he noted that a person cannot continue to perform drama in court to frustrate a case.